I honestly did not see Dylan Mortensen as the gamer type, but okay. Hey guys, this is Jules with True Crime Reactions. Earlier today, I saw that Melissa Jade was talking about this new information that came out and it was interesting to me. And I jumped in and was taking a listen. This is literally the first time you guys are gonna hear one of their surviving roommates, family members gave an interview, right? Like none of them have been talking whatsoever. Literally nada has been coming from that side of the camp, okay? Now, there's a guy that, you know, has a book that dropped today, go figure, that had an interview with Ashley Banfield. Mm -hmm. In this interview, he's claiming to have done an interview with Brent Mortensen, which is Dylan Mortensen's father. Now, I'm going to have the link to the Daily Mail article in the description box. It pretty much matches everything that this author guy states in his interview. And I'm not trying to plug this guy. I'm just not. I find it just not cute whenever people put books out about cases that are ongoing and happening right now. I just feel like it's in poor taste, bad form, as, you know, Captain Hook on Once Upon a Time would claim. So, yeah, I don't, I just don't like it. So, I'm not going to give you his name. It's in, you know, it's in the article. We're going to go through the article because it is, you know, it is kind of interesting, some of the information in here but then not at the same time because it seems pretty like typical for what's happening but let's just go over it and just get the little new tidbits and little nuggets shall we so here it is in all of its glory the daily mail article and it claims that she is isolating herself and healing by playing online games which is again i don't know i'm just making that that very judgmental statement because when you look at her I don't see, I don't see a gamer girl here. I mean, that's obviously me making like a really judgmental statement, but I just, I just don't see gamer girl when I look at her in her life. I just don't, but you know, people pick up new hobbies when they, you know, go through situations. Her dad is making mention of the fact that a lot of the reason why she's isolating herself is because of all of the cyber bullying. And I mean, I understand, I understand that. I mean, I, even though I have all, all the questions, okay, I have all of the questions when it comes to that eight hour gap between, you know, the time that we're being told that the incident happened and the 911 call, everybody has questions about that. But there's been a lot of really unnecessary and uncalled for things being said on the internet. And we all know that it's true. So I can only imagine how this stuff is actually affecting her, especially if for some reason it can actually be explained and make sense. But to me, it just, you can't, you can't, you can't sit there and claim you heard things that got you up and out of bed multiple times. And then after all of these things got you awake and alert to the fact that you were getting out of bed, walking to your door, opening it, making observations, closing it, walking back to your bed. That's movements. Your body is awake. Your body's awake, especially if you've done it multiple times. And then after all of that alertness, okay, then you see someone clad in black walking past your door and you go into a frozen shock phase and lock your bedroom. It's highly unlikely that you could just fall asleep. And I know that they didn't just fall asleep because the police have already made it very clear in the PCA that they are basing the timeline, the end time for this incident on the data from the two surviving roommates phones. That matters here. So I'm just going to make a very educated guess on that, that there's something on the two roommates' phones that leads the police to believe that that's the end time of the incident because something was said regarding the incident. Like I've mentioned before, whatever is on the two roommates' phones that the police are using for this is not, hey girl, what are you gonna wear out tomorrow night, okay? It would have to be relevant to the situation. So whenever they'd say, oh, she was freaking out and she just froze and she locked the door, she didn't know what to do, for seven hours and you just fall asleep after freaking out 
locking the door in fear and you just fall asleep? No. No. Now, these are the statements I wanted to focus on because when I was listening in Melissa's live, these caught me. These caught me. And I want to know what you guys think about these. She is in trauma therapy of sorts. She's getting help from the spiritual community. What does that mean? Trauma therapy of sorts does not mean that she's in trauma therapy. And then if you mix the of sorts with the she's getting help from the spiritual community, what what kind of what does that mean? What does that mean? Now, I was getting into it a little bit with some people in the chat, and I don't care. I have my opinions. If you are doing trauma therapy, but you're not leaving the house, you're not going out into the public, okay, I get that there's online things. If it's with a legit psychiatrist, legit doctors, a legit practice, cool. Okay, I know there's plenty of people, people in my family included, that do their mental health things on the internet, through Zoom calls. Okay, I get that. But this is saying therapy of sorts and then talking about getting help from the spiritual community. This isn't saying, you know, from the church. And so I don't know. I don't know what that religious background is. I know there's a lot of talk about the religion in that area and I haven't seen anything that makes me want to look down that path so we're not going to go there right now at all probably ever but just the statement she is in trauma therapy of sorts just makes me believe that it's this is not like a licensed type therapy that she's getting and it's just strange it's just strange to me and again i could just be reaching i i, I will do that sometimes but that's why i'm asking you am i reading too much into that little comment because the of sorts and spiritual community thing is just very strange verbiage to me. It just is. Then he goes on to state that she is isolating herself, but stepping out a little bit out of time and that she's gaming online with peers in group gaming sessions, which means that she's like getting on Fortnite or getting on Minecraft and playing in live with other people. Okay. Just like my kids do. And that's just an example. There's so many games, Ro Roblox, there's so many games that you can do live playing with, you know, everyone, even people across the planet. She's doing what she can without going into public. I mean, I understand that feeling about like, feeling like you can't go out. We've been pushing ourselves to actually try to keep to a little bit of a routine to just not throw everything off in our situation. But I know that with us, we feel safer at home not in the public, vulnerable in the public. So I get that. I get that, especially with the mainstream media. We're just going to go ahead and do this now instead of waiting because this is mentioned later on, but let's just go ahead and do this now. Do you guys remember this picture? Yeah, I only flashed it up there for like a second because guess what? It's not Dylan. It's Dylan's 17-year-old little sister. I knew it wasn't Dylan the second I saw it. So many people think that this is Dylan, has thought that it was Dylan, didn't pay attention to the obvious differences, okay? I knew it wasn't Dylan. This is a 17-year-old girl that the mainstream media just blasted all over the place because they were too stupid and careless to go in and validate that that was actually an adult named Dylan Mortensen in that photo. Instead, it was a minor. So I get why she's wanting to stay inside and why her father feels like this. It's easy to see both sides. I can have questions for little Miss Dylan and little Miss Bethany and still say little Miss in front of their name, but still understand where all of this is coming from. And I, I do, I get it. Now there is one detail in here that I do. Oh, this is the dude. And like I said, the link for this is going to be in the description box. So you can just go click on it. And it's going to have all of this. There's his book. I just don't understand people who want to write books before the whole situation is done and over with. I just feel like it's unnecessary and just like in poor taste. It, it just really is. And see, here it is right here. Again, police described how she froze in fear, but then locked her door and went to sleep. You just can't. See, right here. 
standing in a frozen shock phase as the man walked towards the house's back door before she locked herself in her room. After she locked herself in her second floor bedroom, she fell asleep. This is what I want to talk about right here. I'm wondering if this came from her dad because right here is the first time we get an actual like description of what kind of mask it was because so far we've just been being told mask but this is stating who was wearing a ski mask at the time so what i would like to know is if there's a couple questions here is this coming from this person right here this noah half that wrote this article is that coming from this guy out of his own whatever or is it coming from this guy because it came from her daddy because she told her daddy he was wearing a ski mask and honestly i wish that they would just clarify that i don't see what would be the big deal in just clarifying that because of the whole bushy eyebrow thing right okay let's look at let's look at some ski masks Okay, so just going in and typing in black ski mask, look at the face coverage on these, okay? Look at the face coverage. Like even this person right here, you can't see eyebrows at all. You can't. Look, let's see on the mannequin. Okay, you can see eyebrows, but it goes into the mask, which would almost make it seem as if somebody's eyebrows might look bushier than they actually are. Look at this one right here. The eyebrow goes with the form. Okay, this isn't the kind of ski mask. <laughs> That's not what I was looking for at all. Okay, let's look at this one. This is a bandana face thing. This one covers the face. So it could have been something like this. But whenever you think ski mask, you think ski mask. You think robber ski mask. Like a thief ski mask. And look like some of them yeah i guess you can put the eyebrows like close to it look let's see this one see this one the eyebrows are like touching it okay look even this guy he has thick eyebrows and you see how this probably makes it look a lot thicker because it's touching the mask let's see can you see her eyebrows at all that's too small to even tell and see, people were thinking at first that it was a mask like this because it talked about how the nose and the mouth were covered, I believe. It states that the nose and the mouth were covered, and so people were like, oh, it had to be that kind of mask. But then I guess they have these two. I don't know, guys. And see, then they have like this. This is a box. What is it? a balaclava I've, i mean i probably and I'm, i know not probably i'm totally getting that word wrong but i've seen this kind of mask before and see the eyebrows touch the front but i mean it matters the type of mask on the person that dylan actually saw hella matters because they're basing so much of the description of the assailant on their bushy eyebrows so it hella matters because if it's something like this to where the eyebrows are either covered or touching where the eyebrow will meet like the material i mean yeah it could make a, a, a definite change or you know it could have been something more like this this is crazy looking actually this looks like something straight out of silence of the lambs but yeah i guess that's it i just found it interesting that someone related to dylan or bethany's actually or has actually talked out to someone has done an actual interview with someone i highly doubt that i'm going to go buy this book or listen to the audio the guy apparently made it really clear that anyone who's been following this online as a quote unquote sleuth or whatever is going to basically know like 80 percent, if not more of what's in his little book and I just don't feel like paying $22 for a book that I feel shouldn't even be written and published until after the case is finalized and there's like an actual conviction and sentencing handed down. I just find that it's like in poor taste, but that's just my opinion. I want to know what you guys think about the ski mask thing. 
who do you think that information is coming from? Do you think it's coming from the writer of the article or is that being passed down from what Dylan told her dad and maybe he let it slip during the interview? I would love to know because like I've said, the type of mask that this person's actually wearing is hella critical because of them basing so much on these bushy eyebrows. So that detail was, was really interesting. But that is it, you guys. Oh, one more thing. I forgot that I have to actually announce the comment winner for this month's giveaway. Holy crap. I'm running late, you guys. Okay, let me pull the generator up. I'll be right back. Okay, so I grabbed the URL for the video. This is the one that you had to comment on in order to be entered to win the $50 gift card. Let's go ahead and do... Of course, I'm not a robot. Am I going to fail these? I usually fail these. Is that it? Okay. And I'm keeping all that in there because you guys need to see that I'm not cutting any edits. Okay. Now I said that and then I said the winner's name wrong. I said Lady Pits for like infinity times. So I'm gonna I just ended up doing a voiceover for this to say Lady Pit five is the winner of this month's $50 comment picker generator thingy my bobber gift card. And I still need Paul, Paul to message me because he was the member winner for the $50 gift card. Because you guys remember every month I do two different giveaways. I do a $50 gift card giveaway where members of the channel are automatically enrolled. And then I do a video upload where I pick a random commenter using what you guys just saw me use. So hopefully next time I don't say the winner's name wrong and I can just keep the whole thing in here because that whole point of that was for you guys to see the entire process unedited and uncut to show that it's legit. And then I said Lady Pitts. 30,000 times and I just could not allow that to stay that way without me making a correction. So here we are. <laughs> so congratulations to both of the winners and I want to know what you guys think about this little article that we just went over. Am I reaching on the therapy thing? Because it kind of doesn't sound like she's really getting any therapy. It sounds like she's just online gaming and just kind of wanting to stay to herself. But I guess maybe that's therapy to some people, right? Let me know what you guys think. See y'all.